get out your vape, pretend the snow is a lot deeper than it is, take a rip, because it's a Subaru video today, boys. Today we're going to be changing the oil on my 1999 Subaru Forester with the 2.5 liter motor. Now this process is going to be the same for pretty much all Foresters up until about 2003. Even then, those Foresters as well, I have about relatively the same oil change process as do most Subarus in the late 90s to about the early 2000s. So the very first thing that we're going to want to do is get the car up on ramps or jack stands or whatever you uh, choose. These are actually kind of high enough from the factory to reach where you need to without any additional help. but. To make life easier and because I'm fat, I put it up on some ramps and we are going to get to that oil pan a lot easier now. Now, since it's also super cold out and I've only brought my hoodie to my friend's place here, um, if you got a heater, go ahead and crank it up now because it's chilly. Because it's chilly, we're actually going to be going with 5W30 oil, not the typical 10W30 that I run during the summer and the warmer months. This way, the oil's a little less uh, viscous, and it has a lot easier time getting to the top end of the motor, and all throughout when the temperature's a lot colder. So once you've lifted up your car, you got it in position, what we're gonna do here is find your hood latch, pop it open, ignore the mess of my car, and come on over to this hood here. Underneath here, I'm sure you've, uh, if you're watching this DIY, you've popped your hood before. This little latch here, click that guy over, Lift up your hood through the ice, find your hood support rod, which is here, and connect it to that hood latch, which doesn't look like it's really coming through well on the screen of this GoPro. So from there, there locate your oil fill. Your oil fill tube is right here, denoted by the oil on there, and then your oil dipstick to check the level of your oil. So here's the tools you're gonna need. An oil drain pan to collect the oil, an oil filter wrench if yours is stuck on or a tool to remove it, kind of like this guy here. Um, a ratchet, a 22 millimeter socket. I have an aftermarket oil pan, so yours might be different. You just have to find the size for yourself. An oil filter, K&N, strictly for performance reasons. Actually, that's just what Walmart had. Some 5W30 if it's cold, 10W30 if it's warm, and a pair of gloves. And that's about all you'll need to do this job. There'll be a link in the description for part and part numbers that you need if you want different style oil filters. Those are usually relatively cheap for these cars and quite abundant because Subaru had a lot of the same oil filters. Even a lot of Japanese cars run very similar oil filters to that, especially the same era. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put this pan underneath there and crack open the drain plug for the oil pan, collect the oil, and while we're doing that, we're going to come back up here, unscrew the oil filter or the oil cap just to let this thing flow a lot better. And I'll show you what I mean. I apologize for the noise. I had to turn the heater on because it's uh, just about 20 degrees Fahrenheit or about negative 6.7 degrees for the rest of the world that hasn't caught up to the standard system yet. So we're going to come under here now and we're going to locate our drain plug which is right here on the oil pan. This little knob here, and on mine it happens to be a 22 millimeter. Like I said, yours may vary as I jostle the camera all about. And this should not be on there with very much force at all. So we're gonna just crack that guy open. Once it has been loosened up enough, you can start unscrewing it by hand, just enough so that it'll start spilling oil all over your arm. This is why I don't have the hoodie on. Oop, there we go. So these gloves come in handy. And a plastic bag like this or something where you can go and put your dirty oil bolt down. Now that that's draining out, let's go up to the top and open up that oil fill. Now that I've got oil all over my GoPro screen, thanks to my oily gloves, we're gonna go ahead and open this guy up here, which will relieve some pressure or whatever science that's been built up inside of here and let her shoot out a little bit more. Now that stream is running a little bit better and once that's all drained out, give that about eh, three or four minutes. Most of it should be out. Clean off your drain plug, which mine fell over here into some dirt. So I'm going to spray it off with some brake clean, clean it down nicely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to crack open the oil filter to see if this new one came with any uh, gasket, which it didn't for 
the strain plug. So this crush washer actually looks okay. I'm gonna reuse it and pretend it doesn't leak any oil. All right, now that I've cleaned this guy off, I'm gonna plug it back up because that is slowed down to a small drip. I'm gonna clean off that surface with this rag here, which is soaked in brake cleaner, and then screw this guy back on to stop the flow of oil. When tightening these back up, of course switch the ratchet back to righty tighty give her a couple turns you don't really want to go too tight because these things can break and strip out in your oil pan and that's just no fun they really don't require a lot of pressure i just like to give it nice little snugness i'm sure there's a foot pound rating but i'm not going much heavier than that which is a little bit also when you're down here you'll notice a couple of coolant leaks you can just go ahead and ignore them and keep adding coolant as you please and now we have to move on to the oil filter which is this guy right here and uh we're gonna try to get them off by hand and if we can't do that oh boy just sound just just thought about how that sounds we're gonna try to throw okay i was very nice to myself when i did this last so we don't need that wrench you may you may not choice is yours oil is going to pour out everywhere so make sure your drain pan is nice and under there unlike mine was please ignore it and okay so we're gonna let that drain for about a minute or two clean off that surface and install the new filter in just a few minutes and uh i guess i'm going to try to tighten that hose clamp to get that coolant leak a little better or leaking a little less i should say so uh, shake her out there now what i'm going to do is take the new oil filter get a little bit of new oil some people use old oil you can use whatever you want i won't judge you not in front of your face at least lubricate this little uh gasket surface here where the oil filter is going to go on and then from there some people actually even fill their oils or oil filter with oil which isn't a bad idea usually we're going to go ahead and screw this up on here where we just cleaned that surface should thread on nice and easily and we're just going to give it a hand tighten i think this has uh, the K&N has like a 24 millimeter bolt on there which you can tighten if you really want i prefer just going until it's pretty snug by hand and i've never had an issue with leaking that way so that's what I'm going to do there. I'm going to clean up the oil and just go a little bit tighter. And then we're going to move up to the top and fill this guy up with some oil. Now comes the fun and potentially environmentally disastrous bit, which actually makes it fun. We're going to pour the oil into there. I forgot to mention earlier, you definitely need a funnel for this. Um, if not, have fun. So what we're going to do, this is a five gallon jug. These things take about four and a half quarts, um, especially if you got a little leak like I do. Okay, so we're going to have to look to about halfway under there, which is the one quart mark. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kid ourselves, we're gonna pretend that we can hold it even periodically and make sure that we can see the fluid level somewhere around there as we continue to pour in. So go ahead and pour in. And then once we're at the level that we need, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it up, drive it off the ramps, let it run for a couple of minutes so it gets warm, then let it sit for about another minute or two, and then use the dipstick to check the oil level. So right now, I'm just going to kind of pour this in, hopefully one-handed without much disaster. I'm going to pretend that I can see and I can hold this level, which we all know I can't. And it looks like we've used about two and a half quarts already. So we're almost halfway, well, a little over halfway there, I should say. All right, we're just under two quarts. I think the official for manual transmission is 4.2 quarts and 4.4 for automatic i forgot i've got a manual so we're just going to go just over the one quart line here the specifications will actually be down below for your model and we're just above the quart line come on sweet 10 minute plus youtube so i can get that ad revenue and i think we are just about there so we're going to set her down and then uh, check for leaks under here. Definitely want to check for leaks. And now that we've determined that it's only leaking coolant and we can ignore that as we discussed earlier, what we're going to do is we're going to put the cap back on here, start her up, drive her down the ramps, let her idle for a few minutes, as I said. And I keep repeating myself because I want that ad revenue. And then we are good to go. Now we're going to start it up, pray that it doesn't knock, and then go underneath and check for leaks. Make sure you're out of gear as I am here. Yeah, it started. I mean, that was the expected result. So now we're just going to check for all leaks besides coolant because, like I keep saying, who needs coolant in the winter? I mean, am I right? It's already cold enough out here. All right, looks good. I don't hear much knocking because the exhaust noise is pretty loud because of the exhaust leak. And uh, 
that little heater there is quite loud, so we can ignore any knocking anyway. So let's back it up down, or back it up off the ramps, let it warm up, and then check that dipstick. I let it run for a couple of minutes. It got up to operating temperature. It's also been sitting for a few more minutes now. And we can see underneath here, there's no leaks other than coolant. And we can come up to the top here, locate your dipstick, pull it out, use a clean rag to get all the earl off of her. There we go. Stick it back in. And then we're gonna check our oil level. And it seems we are over full. Cool, so I'm gonna ignore that because this leaks a little bit anyway. I forgot to mention, it's a lot better to do this in the snow because you get so much more clout with the Subaru community and you can really check for leaks nice and easy once you're done underneath. All kidding aside, you really don't wanna fill up your oil too much. You can blow out seals and all this other nonsense when you raise your oil pressure a lot by adding way too much. I'm just a hair over, so it's not gonna to be too much of a deal. Keep an eye on yours, make sure you measure it appropriately. Like I said, the description, down in the description, you'll have your accurate oil needs, torque specs, and everything else you have to do to use it. Everything else you have to need, everything, everything else, you, the cold's getting to me. Everything else you need to do this job properly. So now that the job is done, what we're gonna do is take a little hit of our no nicotine flavored vape juice, which if nicotine was ever a flavor to begin with, which I don't think it is, uh, to, congratulate, to congratulate ourselves for a job well done. Perks of being a Subaru owner, guys. So make sure to hit that like button if you liked it, share it with a friend if they have a Subaru, if it might just be helpful for them to see some idiot in the cold, in the snow, change their oil. And uh, make sure to remember to subscribe because there's a lot more cool stuff coming up, like I promised in the last video. I didn't film it this weekend, but I've got my Eastwood welding set up. Right now it's set up for MIG, but it's a MIG um, TIG and stick welding. That video will actually be up in a couple weeks, probably like two weeks. And uh, have a great Christmas, have a wonderful new year. If I don't upload this by then, hopefully I should. And remember as always, keep it foul.